Hello, my name is Miguel Jaller. I'm a faculty here at UC Davis and the Institute of Transportation Studies. And today I'm going to tell you a bit about the work we're doing in terms of the impact of e-commerce in last mile distribution. So as you know, uh, last mile distribution is part of the freight system and it's involved in uh, the last stages of the supply chain, it's the last stages of the distribution part of any good or service that goes into commercial establishments or residential areas. So you can see in the, in the slide, we have kind of the traditional uh, typography or topology of a supply chain, where you have shippers, you have distribution centers, uh, sortation centers, and then they go from these sortation centers, distribution centers, all the packages and goods go to the consumers or the commercial establishments. What happened is that in many cases, there are some returns or what we call reverse logistics that then people or consumer or the, the establishments then send back to the, the shipper or the, co the parent company. This can be done directly from uh, the person going to a drop-off facility or having the vehicle coming into the location and picking up the product. So all of this is kind of a traditional supply chain and now in the, in the age of the e-commerce, there are more and more of these products and packages going to residential locations. So the focus of this uh, talk is about this last part. When products leave a warehouse or distribution centers, center and they go to the residential location or a commercial location for, for that matter. What are the, the main important aspects of it? Well, e-commerce have been growing uh, steadily since 2008, 2009 at a rate of about, I don't know, 10 uh, double digits every year. Uh, still today, e-commerce sales in the retail industry are only represented to about 12% of all the, the retail sales in the US. So even though it's still a small proportion of all the uh, sales that we are seeing in the retail sector, it, all the issues associated with the, with the large growth of these residential deliveries we are feeling in every single city. So what are those problems? Well, I'll discuss later, but just to give you a sense, Today, about 55% of the U.S. population shops online. However, about 80% of all the shopping is affected in some way or another by e-commerce. In, in one particular day, about 2-3% to of, a, of individuals shop online, whereas 40% will shop uh, in a store or not online. So again, it has been growing a lot. About half of the population shops online. Most of the shopping is affected by e-commerce, either in the searching, in the return, or in the comparison aspect of the uh, shopping uh, behavior. And this is affecting the way people travel. This is affect, affecting the way companies have been locating their facilities, the warehouse, the distribution centers, how they manage inventories, how much uh, products they carry in a store versus how much they carry in their uh, website or their online platform. And all of this is what is now known as omni-channel distribution. Before, there was almost single channel. Either you were only online or only in a store. Now companies are offering all these multiple multiple channels. So that's affecting the choices consumers have and therefore is affecting what people choose to do when they, are, uh, they want to buy something. And buying is not only the act of purchasing the product, it involves searching, it involves the comparison, it involves then what happens after you buy the product. So Sometimes you keep it, sometimes you return it. So all these phases of the purchasing uh, process are affecting also travel and is affecting and are affecting the last mile distribution. So what is, why is this a problem? Well, because it has been rising so fast that then there, there are many more trucks and many more commercial vehicles coming into location that they, they, didn't, they didn't use to come before. So this is creating more congestion, more emissions, more energy is being consumed, there are more conflict with pedestrians, with cyclists, with other vehicles. There is a fight for curb space, there is a fight for these limited resources inside the cities. So there are many, many more problems. So what do we need to do? Well, first we need to start studying it, or we need to go deeper into our analysis on what are the actual impacts of e-commerce in last mile distribution or in the urban uh, settings. However, this is a very complex, complex problem. And there are many aspects that affect the sustainability of e-commerce, the sustainability of shopping patterns and shopping behaviors. And that's what I'm going to be talking for the rest of, the, of this lecture. So the impact of online shopping depend on first kind of the consumer side, the demand side, and then the supply side. Why I'm saying that there, is, there are these two components? Well, first, 
on the demand side, it depends what consumers are doing in the light of uh, e-commerce. People can substitute what they were doing before and now shop everything online, or they can do both. They may have some purchases in a store and some purchases online, or because it's so convenient now and you have so many other products that were not available to your market, now there may be some induced demand uh, in that sense. In addition to that, because it's so convenient, it's so cheap, almost free for you to get a new product online, that now you some people are ordering many products that they don't need, and then they return the ones that didn't fit, that they didn't like. Now, on the supply side, you have all the things that companies are doing to tackle this challenge. As I mentioned before, some of these companies have been relocating the facilities or are opening more facilities near the consumer to be able to offer faster and more reliable deliveries. But also, they are using different type of products, different type, of, sorry, different type of modes, different type of uh, strategies to distribute. So these are two different aspects that are making the system either sustainable or not sustainable, and that's, those are the things that we need to to study. So what have been we doing? Well, we have been analyzing these two things. So in this work that I'm going to be showing you in the next few slides, uh, we have been following kind of the methodology. First, we estimate the demand side by estimating behavioral models of shopping behavior using the American Time Use Travel Survey. Then we analyze how people travel for shopping. Are they going from their home or work to the store and then coming back? Or are they doing the shopping activities as part of a tour in a daily, during their daily activities? So we are trying to analyze that. And we use data from the American Time, Time Use Travel Survey, but also from the National Household Travel Survey. Then we need to analyze how companies are delivering. So we got some data, as I will explain later, to analyze those delivery patterns from vehicles and what is efficiency. Then we compare the two. We compare what is better, either going to shopping or having the product coming to you. Then we are analyzing two different things, kind of going deeper into, the, into more analysis. The first one is, what are the impacts of the really fast deliveries? Companies like Amazon are offering two day, one day, same day. Uh, one hour, two hour deliveries, what is the impact of those uh, service levels into the sustainability of online commerce? So in terms of shopping demand, as I mentioned, we estimated uh, behavioral models and we are using the American Time Use Travel Survey. So the ATUS uh, is a survey, it's a one day diary. There are about 10,500 individuals, that's the, the kind of the sample size, and they log all the activities, the location and the timing for those activities during a 24 hour period. So we can use that data to analyze what they do in a day. So as you can see in the slide, there are different type of activity names and the locations of those activities. So we then first kind of cluster and analyze which activities related to shopping, can we say they were done in a store as opposed to being done online. And then we work through the data uh, to have the online, the in-store and maybe people that may have done both. Then we develop a uh, behavioral model. This is a multinomial log logic choice model where we have basically what, four choices in a day. Either you don't shop in a day, you shop in a store exclusively, you shop online exclusively, or you may be doing both things during a typical day. And these are the results of the model. Uh, we tested different characteristics of the individuals, so of the socioeconomic and demographic characteristics. We also tested uh, variables related to where they are. Uh, we also tested uh, variables related to the season of when the shopping is done. And as you can see, there are differences between their characteristic of the people that shop online versus the in-store and people that buy both. In general, uh, income, um, location, people in the Western large cities shop more online than people in the rest of the country. Uh, people in the Southern part shop more in the store. Uh, people, see, people in cities that are large or are more than one million shop overall more than other individuals. Uh, females shop more online than males. And there are other factors that kind of hinder the probability that somebody shopping in a day, either in one of the channels. So we are using these models now to estimate what is the propensity of shopping for any individual in any city uh, throughout the US. The next part is, okay, we know if somebody's shopping, but do we, we want to explain now how they are shopping? Either if it's in a store, we have to now identify, are they going just to the store or are they going to different places? And one of the places that they're going is 
to do the shopping. So we got data from Atus and from the National Household Travel Survey to come up with some distribution functions. So what we see in the slide is first on the uh, top left, we have the distribution of the number of shopping tours that somebody will do in a day. And when I'm talking about shopping tours, I'm actually reflecting any tour that has at least one shopping activity or a stop within the tour. The next one, or part B, is the number of stops that people do in a shopping tour. Mostly one, two, or three are the common, uh, the, the majority of all the tours. However, there may be people that do up to 10 stops in a tour in a day. However, the probability is, is quite low. Now we also have what is the approximate distance or travel distance of these tours depending on the number of stops that people's gonna do in one single tour. And then finally, that was important for our analysis is if you have a tour, then what is the percentage of all the activities that you're doing in a tour that are related to shopping? Remember, shopping is not only the shopping, but it's also the searching or the comparison as, as discussed in the uh, Atos. Now we move to the demand side. As I mentioned, we got data from some of the delivery uh, GPS from the fleet DNA data from NREL, and we analyzed the data for different last mile delivery locations. So as you can see on the slide, we have beverage delivery, warehouse delivery, parcel, linen, food, and local delivery. We're gonna concentrate on parcel because that's the majority of all the e-commerce that go to residential locations. As you can see, most of the, the routes uh, for delivery routes are about 50 miles around the, the average. But what we found is that about 95% of all the route that we got in the sample were less than 100 miles. So we created probability distribution functions for this uh, distribution route that we're gonna be using. And this is an example. Uh, we uh, fit a weighable distribution. And then we also have another important aspect of, of last mile distribution is how many stops or how many deliveries can you do along a route? And deliveries and stops are different because the driver may stop, but also deliver to one, two, or three, or four customers for every single stop. But the stop can give you kind of a, a rough idea about the consolidation that they can do along a route. To give you perspective, the national average is about 35 stops in a tour. However, when you go to companies like DHL, FedEx, or UPS, they can do 100, 120. And if you look into packages, one example on the higher side could be the Amazon uh, vans, the blue vans that you see in some of your cities that can handle about 200 packages in, in one delivery route. So we now have the behavioral models for estimating if somebody's shopping, if it's shopping online in a store. Now we can estimate how they are traveling for shopping. And then we can also estimate how and how much uh, mileage is being traveled by the delivery vehicle that is bringing out the products to your house or your uh, choice location. Then we can do some of the analysis. Now we can go in and compare the two. What is the efficiency of going to a store versus the efficiency of having products delivered to you? So we are, because we, are, we need to make some additional assumptions, we are assuming that everybody that is going to a store is using a regular car, everybody that is getting a delivery, that delivery is coming into a regular delivery truck, kind of a class five, and what you have in this slide is kind of the emission factors for uh, CO, NOx, uh, CO2, particulate matter, and so on uh, for the two types based on the MFAC database from ARB. And this kind of simulation analysis, again, what we do is we go to the study area, in this case, let's say San Francisco and the city of Dallas, or the county of San Francisco and the, and the core of the city of Dallas. And we estimate, we generate a synthetic population based on the census data about uh, each individual. And then we apply the models directly to each of those individuals and using Monte Carlo, uh, we can estimate the probabilities if they shop or not. After we know who is shopping, then we estimate how much they are traveling, what is the VMT, and then based on the VMT, we can use the rates, the emission rates, and estimate all the environmental impacts from their travel. Similarly, for the people that are shopping online, now we can estimate how much travel is generated by the delivery trucks and all the emission factors. So what you can see in this uh, kind of table uh, is that there is not much difference between Dallas and San Francisco. Uh, there is about 10% about difference in, in most of the, the different assumptions. However, what is important, I'll show you in the next few slides, is that today, when comparing omnichannel, that means what we are doing today, some people is doing both, some people is only doing one of the channels. If we compare that to the case where everybody is just shopping 
uh, in a store, there's much, not much of a difference. I mean, we get 5% reduction here, 5% reduction there. We get some increases, especially in NOx, because uh, commercial delivery vehicles generate more NOx than the passenger vehicles. But in general, we are not seeing that much of a difference from this static analysis. As I'll show you later, this is changing because of some of the decisions that uh, either the individuals are doing or the companies are doing for the delivery patterns. However, when we were, if we are able to substitute all the travel related to shopping, so nobody else, nobody is going to stores anymore and everything that they buy is online. That's what we are comparing in this slide. So it's kind of the case of everything online versus the case of everything in a store. As you can see now, there, is, there are potential savings if we are able to consolidate. We don't think that's gonna happen because people's gonna still go to locations. They're gonna still generate some travel. But anyway, there is going to be substantial reductions if we are able to consolidate in the trucks, whatever we are shopping. However, we have to be careful of the NOx because still we get about 25% increase in NOx from this kind of all to all uh, scenario. However, there is a caveat. When I was showing the result for the Omni channel to all in a store, that's assuming that we are able to consolidate shipments in the trucks. What is happening today? Well, we have two things. One is what we call the basket size, and one is what we call how much consolidation you can do, because if you only have one hour, two hour to distribute, there's not that many products you can put in a truck to be able to distribute in a city. So what we did here is, well, let's see what will be the break even point between everything online versus everything in the store under some assumptions. The first type of assumptions are, what is the basket size? And when I talk about basket sizes, how many products are you buying in every single purchase? On average, people buy two to three products every time they go to store. But however, we only buy about 1.1 products every time we shop online. So that is kind of a replacement rate. If you are buying in a store three products, that will mean like three online purchases. Are we doing those three online purchases one after the other, or are we waiting a little bit so they become completely different purchases that will come in three different trucks to your house? So what we find in this slide is, for the case of the basket size, was where one there is one to one relationship in terms of basket size, and there there is when there is a 2.5 to one relationship in basket size, we see that on the worst case, and that was case related to Knox, we need about 40. Uh, deliveries to have to be made in every single uh, delivery route to be compatible to people going to the stores. However, when you go to the 2.5 to 1, that actually jumps to about 90. And for the large companies that are doing consolidated deliveries, this may be a, a good number. But for the average in the in this, the US, this is highly, it is really high. Now, the other thing we wanted to try is, okay, what happens when companies want to do offer the one hour, two hours, as I was mentioning, in that time frame, there is no time to consolidate. So for the same amount of products that are generated in a city, now a company will have to send more and more vehicles with less uh, products to be able to distribute them in the one hour, two hour. And as you can see here is on the X axis, you have the number of deliveries or stops in a delivery tour on the Y axis is, is the uh, average distance between stops. And as you reduce the number of tops per delivery, then, uh, then the average distance of this or the average impact per delivery increases exponentially. So we need to be careful on all of these services. So finally, what, what have we found about this, this work? First, there are differences in terms of demographic and regional differences about shopping behavior. Females, higher propensity of online shopping. People in large cities, especially in the West, shop online more. In general, there is so overall complementarity and that's just kind of a limitation of the of the data we are using because we are not able to analyze kind of a, at a commodity or a per commodity base in terms of what the shopping uh, choices are. Why is this important? Well, let's say today a lot of people have been able to substitute, I don't know, electronics. We buy most of our electronics online and we are not buying them in a store. However, we still go to stores to buy another type of product. So on average, we're doing both but maybe we have, we have able to substitute part of our, our deliveries or our shopping. Uh, substitution effect, as I was mentioning, have to be done at the commodity level. Shopping externalities, well, we have not analyzed upstream effects, 
what have what is the impact of facility location what is the impact of the packaging what is the impact of for online shopping all the energy have to be used for all the where, uh, warehouse for the servers and all the information and so on and then uh, something that is really important and I mentioned before basket size rush hour deliveries and levels of consolidation they can make or break the sustainability of online shopping as opposed to everybody going to the stores and so on so Thank you. I hope you enjoy the, the talk and we can have questions later.